Good evening and a very warm welcome to the hour's news package with radio and television Tonga News for tonight. Looking at today's top stories, His Serene Highness Prince Kalani Valofotofili officially commissioned the new vessel for the two newies. 22 secondary students in Tonga received scholarship awards from the Chinese embassy. And a man's death in Gaowai Ha'apai suspected to be suicide. Now for the stories in detail. The noble representative of the two newies, His Serene Highness Prince Kalani Valofotofili, officially commissioned the new vessel for the two newies at Avuna Wharf on Saturday, naming the new vessel on the Tongan version Koekele Sipe. Alice Tupou takes up that story. His Serene Highness Prince Kalani Valofotofili named the new vessel Koekele Sipe. It is my honor to declare the name of this vessel as only God's grace. One of the Bible translations, the Amplified Bible says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. Therefore, grace is the unmerited favor of God towards mankind, as we did not deserve God's forgiveness, but God looked beyond our sins and faults and saw our need to save us. He sent his son as our savior to save us from eternal judgment. The program was attended by Her Royal Highness, Princess Alote Mafle Oplolevu Tuita, and Lord Duita. They both boarded the vessel for a cruise ship at the Nukalofan port. <laughs> The vessel is 62 meters long, 10.2 meters wide, and it can carry more than 100 passengers and 650 tons of cargo. The vessel's engine can run up to speeds of around 50 knots per hour. This vessel was first used by a company in Japan as their multi-purpose spare boat, but it was rarely used. The person who traveled to Japan and board the vessel, Lata Tanmana, said, Although this vessel was launched in 1998, but the total amount of time the engine has been used is below the 50,000 hour mark. We believed without doubt that this vessel is safe and reliable and will save the people of New well. This ship is an indispensable element of social infrastructure for development in the two newer. She will transport passengers between the newer and the other islands and supplying goods required for development. From the ship's history, she has never had accidents in the ocean. In terms of how construction, the kill plate is 24 millimeter, almost one inch while the bottom plate is 22 millimeters. The frame space is 550 millimeters, indicating that the keel and bottom plates are quite thick as power carriers over 10,000 cross tonnes. The vessel is worth more than 6 million per anga, but the total worth for all of its expenses is worth 2.9 million per anga. The people of the Tony was only contributed 26% of the funding to purchase the vessel with the rest made possible through the Ha'amaua Moitonga project with the TDB. Meanwhile, People's Representative of the Tuniwes, Vata Hui, acknowledged the people for all their efforts as this vessel will solve problems in travelling. This program was also attended by the Acting Prime Minister, Minister of Cabinet, Diplomatic Corps and other guests. Reporting for radio and television Tonga News, I'm Adisi Tupo. Research and data collection of natural disasters that occur in Tonga will be more efficient and accurate with thanks to the donation of technical equipment from the Pacific Community or SPC towards ministries that are directly involved with data collection and research of natural disasters. Mark Ake tells you more. The January 15th devastation has been a wake-up call for Tongans, especially the government ministries and related stakeholders that collect data on natural disasters. 
This afternoon, the SPC Through the Pacific Catastrophe Risk Insurance 2 project, or PICRAFI 2, donated 15 technical equipment to different government ministries. The technical research officer of the SPC, Orisi Navalurua, was present at the program. We hope that the training package that you will receive at the end of this project will sustain and expand the capacity built in this project. While much of the training has been done at national level, there is room and capacity to take the training down to the sub-national level with the help and guidance from the training package and, of course, those that have been trained. Key to this is the understanding passed on. In order to understand, we need knowledge. In order to gain that knowledge, we need to be willing. It all starts with a changing of mindsets. As resilient as we are, I believe for us Pacific Islanders, the greatest battleground is in the mind. Looking ahead, the project will hold a GIS training with Tonga Post Survey. As part of the process, we will send out a pre-assessment survey to inform that workshop. The progress so far has been a testament to the support the project has received from all of you. The acting CEO of the Ministry of Finance, Christina Duaimoyapi, said that the equipment will be utilized by surveyors from different ministries, including the Tonga Geological Services, National Emergency Management Office, or NEMO, and other departments to continue research on the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai eruption. Meanwhile, the principal statistician of the Department of Statistics, Ativenia Napomana, said that these equipment are really important in data collection especially because no one knows when natural disasters will take place. Tonga police suspect that the cause of death of a man from Kauvai Haapai was suicide. Police investigation into the case is ongoing, with police department in Haapai has been contacted for comment, but no one was available. Radio and television Tonga News will continue to follow this issue. Her Royal Highness Princess Bilole Vutuita and the Acting Prime Minister Boasi Matailite presented 22 scholarships of the Government of China to 22 students from the church schools in Tonga. The award ceremony was held at the Chinese Embassy on Friday evening. The scholarship is part of the Tongan China Friendship Association High School Scholarship Program since 2017. Due to the expected Christian-based teaching, as this would strengthen students' value system to place them in good state to become a productive citizens of Tonga. The program now supports 22 students across 11 church schools in Tonga this year, with Fautaveika and Seini Fifita from Pula Adventist College. From the Tokai Kolo Church Schools are Crystal Sili and Ofaki Tonga Piliu of Lavengamalie Christian College. From the Catholic Schools are Jaiten Tatafu and Lika Moana Kaltoke of Apifo'o College while at Daguilau College are Joy Kiutau and Caroline Falimaka. From the Free Wesleyan Church Schools are Tokilupe Taunaholo and Hatasha Kaho from Tupo High School. Ahoi Kamisa and Mele Katokakala Filiai from Queen Salote College, with Sione Safi and Devita Pauli from Tupo College. From the St. Enshu High School of the Anglican Church are Caroline Tumua and Winse Moala, who is now Form 7 at Tonga High School while Karina Saili and Hulita Fonua from Tailolo College of the Free Church of Tonga. From the LDS schools are Tuipulotu Sika and Higano Tufui from Liahona High School, while Semisi Hopoi and Mary Sousao from the Ocean of Light International School of the Baha'i Faith. Meanwhile, one of the recipients of the scholarship since 2018, Falta of Beulah College, told Radio Tonga News her appreciation of having the opportunity. I have been receiving this scholarship since 2018 and I appreciate the assistance from the government of China. I know there are a lot of students wishing to have this opportunity, but as myself being part of this scholarship program is my blessing. Perhaps I thank the government of China for this support. I'm one of the best among the thousands of students. The selection of the recipients focused on academically gifted students or students cared by other caregivers and guardians. Since the beginning of the scholarship program in 2017 with 13 students, only five of which still holds the opportunity to date. However, students who will perform really well in their academic achievements can possibly secure an university scholarship to China.
The declaration of the state of emergency to all land and sea areas of Tonga was renewed on Saturday morning, the 16th of July. Alice Dubo will give you the latest update of the state of emergency. According to a statement from the government, it is necessary for emergency powers to be exercised in order to prevent or minimize risk and the loss of human lives to COVID-19 in Tonga. This includes preventing COVID from spreading to outer islands that are yet to record any cases. This renewal is according to sections 37 and 39 of the Emergency Management Act and in recognition of the declaration made by the World Health Organization of COVID-19 as a global. The Ministry of Health confirmed that Tonga is currently under the orange color of the Tonga COVID-19 traffic light framework 2022. As such, the ministry is urging the public to always wear face masks and to practice social distancing. Night curfew will continue from 12 midnight to 5 a.m. in the morning. Reporting for Radio and Television Tonga News, I'm Alice Dupo. And the latest from the Supreme Court, a 44-year-old man, Alifo Siovayangina, was sentenced to six years' imprisonment for housebreaking and theft. Lord Chief Justice Michael Whitten sentenced him last Friday after he was found guilty for stealing tong and valuables from the royal palace in Vavao, valued at around 22,800 paanga. Mark Ake has more on Vayangine's sentence. The incident occurred in October 2017 when the royal housekeeper entered the palace in Neyafu through the kitchen door and noticed that frozen meat had been left out of the fridge. She immediately checked the rest of the residence and found that a number of Tongan mats were missing. When inspecting the outside of the palace, the housekeeper found that a number of louvers from the king's bedroom had been removed and she reported the matter to the governor's office and police. A police specialist found latent fingerprints on the louvers and the prints were analyzed by the Tonga Police Forensics Unit in Walofa and identified a number of prints belonging to the defendant. The Lord Chief Justice accepted the evidence provided by the police. The defendant has a lengthy criminal record dating back to 1992 for robbery, theft, housebreaking, among other offenses. He had also been jailed numerous times. Lord Chief Justice Witten had then sentenced him to six years imprisonment. He also rescinded a one-year suspended sentence from a magistrate's court proceedings, making it a total of seven years imprisonment. Witten ruled that the final two years of his sentence be suspended for three years on conditions. His sentence was also backdated to when he was remanded in custody for his proceeding, excluding the period during which he was mistakenly released from custody in Wawa'u prior to his trial. Sport is up next with Mark Ake brought to you with thanks to the kind sponsorship of Pacific Timber and Hardware. To netball, the Prime Minister, Honorable Huakawa Miriku, presented the Tala with their uniforms last week as they prepare to take on Samoa tomorrow. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and Minister of Health were also present at the squad naming and uniform presentation last Friday. The team will once again be captained by Julita Veve and Claire Yongi as her vice. Also in the team is Kalolaini Aukafolau, Unique Balavi, Beyonce Balavi, Marie Hansen, Salote Taufa, Api Taufa, Lucia Grace Faonuku, Vika Koloto, Otolose Fenga Anuku, Halaivalu Toutai Olepo. The traveling reserves include Betty Talanoa, Anna Kalahi, and Celia Stefano. The team is coached by Jacqua Simpson. The game against Samoa will begin at 8.30 p.m. tomorrow. That wraps up this evening's news package, but before we part, here's one final look at today's top stories. His Serene Highness Prince Kalani Walfotofili officially commissioned the new vessel for the two newest. 22 secondary students in Tonga received scholarship awards from the Chinese embassy. And a man's death in Kauvai Ha'apai suspected to be suicide. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Vahafana Bola. Good evening. <laughs>